Hi friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today I have a very exciting vlog for you. Um, I'm going to be discussing five bits of artist advice that I have kind of learned the hard way, um, specifically geared towards up and coming artists who are pretty confident in their abilities and are ready to take it to the next level and start doing this sort of as a professional or at least semi-professional thing. Um, people who want to grow their audience and eventually start making money from their artwork. Now these are all things, like I said, I kind of learned the hard way and um, hopefully by taking some of this advice it will save you a lot of time, energy, and effort that I know I have personally expended. Um, and since it's just going to be me yammering away, I wanted to make it very exciting for you. So I actually filmed this vlog um, all day today. I had this really long extended day where I went on a hike and then this other ridge and I went to the beach. And so it's a very exciting, adventurous filled vlog. I hope you learn a whole lot and I hope you really enjoy the scenery. And don't you worry your pretty little heads about scribbling down notes because I'm going to be giving you a lot of information. All you need to do is sit back, enjoy, relax, and then when the video is done, pop down below. You will find a link to my blog post where I detail everything that I said out for you so you can use that as a marvelous reference. And go ahead while you're there, um, at my blog you can sign a little uh, subscribe to my weekly birdie blog post and that way once a week you'll get my blog post as well as YouTube videos directly in your inbox and you never have to worry about missing a single thing. So anyways, I'm so glad to have you. I hope you really have fun on my big adventurous day. Um, if you do have fun, please make sure you hit that subscribe button because it helps my channel a lot and it makes sure you come back for all the Aloha adventures. Thanks guys, Mwah! yay, enjoy it. Let's kick off this video in a really fun way. I am doing a beautiful little ridgeline hike here in Aiea, which is the middle part of the island. And since it is a relatively flat and narrow trail, and it has been a relatively beautiful and calm day, why not do it here? So, first things first, not spreading yourself too thin. Yes, okay, this is a mistake that I think a lot of earlier artists make. And the reason is because it can seem like when you are looking out there that some of your favorite artists are like everywhere. They're on all the social medias, they've got the channels, they've got this and that, they've got their Pinterest page up and running. And the thing is, is that a lot of times, um, <laughs> bigger names have teams of people doing that. So they're not even doing it all themselves. But uh, the thing is, is that if you try to do all that yourself, you are going to wind up stretching yourself way too thin. You're going to have all these pages signed up all over the place and they're going to be not loved. They're not going to be updated. You're certainly, even if you can keep like six or seven social medias going, there's no way that you can engage with that much audience. Um, and that is really important. You want to be present. You want to be back and forth. So instead of trying to be everywhere at once and running yourself ragged, which will definitely absolutely a hundred percent happen. If you do, um, pick two or maybe three platforms that you feel like are going to be most effective for getting your name, your brand, your artwork, your flavor your style your audience like think about it think about where you think you're going to be most effective and and put all your heart soul love and care into that trust me it is going to do you so much better like you're just gonna you're gonna wind up getting to know people people are gonna be able to rely on you and honestly you're gonna be able to share more of yourself like here i am i have chosen myself um instagram and obviously youtube as my heavily heavily used social media platforms. Now, of course, I do have a Facebook personal and business page. And honestly, if you're going to do Instagram, it's it's like one step more to do Facebook. And it's just good because there's a lot of people that uh, that, that know, they get to know you in person that want to do the Facebook thing. And so that's fine. I'm not super active on that, but whatever. It's not the worst. So your best bet is to do that because honestly, you want to give yourself to your people. That's how you make connections. That's how you build a genuine audience is by being genuine and being there. And if you are everywhere, then you're not there. And not to mention, each time you sign up for another social media platform, guess what that means? Oh, you think, oh, it's free, it's free exposure. Guess what it ain't? Time. 
And time is your most valuable thing. It is not free. Social media is not free because it takes your time. It takes your headspace. It takes planning. I mean, you want to do a beautiful post. You don't snap a photo and post it. No, you snap 18 photos from all the angles before you make sure that the lighting is good. Da -da 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 -da. Then you have to edit it. Then you caption. You know, you really put your love into each thing. Make each each specific post, each thing that you post out the very best you can, and then people will find you on the platforms where you are. Trust me, you're gonna save yourself so much time, effort, and headache if you just keep keep your margins small, like as far as like how many places you are, but keep your content big and robust and give yourself a lot to the platforms that you choose. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this beautiful hike. It just went from a ridge to gorgeous valley views. I love this island so much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sun is setting on beautiful Lanipo Ridge. This one is right by my house. I love this hike so much. It is incredible. So gorgeous. Um, so anyways, but while I'm out here, I want to talk to you about advice number two, and that is your idols. Yes, your idols, your goal artists is what I like to call them. Now, we all have a bunch of artists that we love, that we think are amazing, that we just see them as huge and larger than life and they're everywhere and their artwork sells for whatever thousands of dollars and they have a million followers and all this and that and we're like oh how did they ever do it so we all have a number of those so i want you to kind of go through your roster of favorite artists and pick two or three of your favorite ones that match um, your style somewhat sort of stylistically your style and or like subject sort of as well as will probably have the same target audience as you and who has a career that is similar to something that you want to emulate so everybody has their um, own sort of idea of what success is right so I want you to pick an artist that matches your style and flavor and everything and also is in a place that you think of as being successful right whatever your perception of successful is and then basically you just kind of follow them as consistently as possible you almost want to stalk them you just want to find out every single thing they're doing like go to their websites go check out their cvv or like exhibitions list their bio list that is a wealth of knowledge a wealth of knowledge because basically you can just go and look at all the exhibitions they've done all the awards they've done or gotten like all kinds of things and then you can kind of follow in their footsteps for the most part like you can apply to those same places or at least check out those galleries maybe you don't apply quite yet but you build up to that kind of thing you know um, maybe you oh, enter some of the same contests that they used to and like now of course sometimes they are at this point during and all that kind of stuff but uh, but check them out and just sort of you're not gonna be able to do tit for tat and realize of course every journey is different but you can garner a lot of information you can find out what kind of schooling they've done you know and while you're there find out a little bit more about them do they teach at all do they do they conduct workshops because that's a really uh, excellent way that a lot of artists have income is by teaching and sharing their knowledge you know sign up for their mailing list like make sure that you stay abreast of what they've got going on like be involved follow them on social media you know a lot of artists like they can seem so amazing and almost like you know goddess like and like so far removed but they're just people too and if you follow them and comment and engage with them like they will notice you even if they've got a million followers like if you are there consistently supportive you know buy buy some prints from them if you possibly can I mean you do not have to spend money with an artist to, to appreciate them but it is a nice way of kind of like showing your support so you know like follow you know follow your favorite people see what they're doing garner inspiration however this is a big however do not compare yourself to these artists and I mean that like not now and not ever like even as you start to grow do not compare yourself to them um, <clears throat> the reason being 
every artistic journey is different, okay? Being an artist is one of these crazy careers where there's really no absolute right or wrong way. Everybody kind of does their own thing. There's a million different ways to go about doing it and earning money creatively. And um, you also, you don't know where everybody has started out. You don't know their socioeconomic background. You don't know how supportive or unsupportive their parents were. You might not know the extent of their schooling, although usually if you do a little research, you can find that out. But there is so much more. Oh, also, don't even get me started on connections and things like that. Like, you don't know who this artist's parents knows. Like, you don't know if it was like, oh, my cousin, you know, owns that famous gallery. So I got in this huge gallery right off the bat just because my cousin, you know. So don't compare yourself because you, no matter how much research you do, you don't know it all. And also, it's never gonna make you feel good comparing yourself to anyone ever. Um, however, you can use these goal art audit artists as sort of like a really amazing kind of like you know loose checklist you know sort of a at least a way to get started directionally practice expand and grow this can seem kind of obvious or kind of like gimme but it's really not I mean the thing is is that a lot of us tend to stop trying new things once we get out of art school and are no longer being told by a teacher okay we're gonna try this thing we're gonna do this other thing blah 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 now it's time for you on your own to try expanding if there's something you want to work on go for it you can be bad at something and still be a good artist and slowly get better and progress trust me your audience wants to see that now it is important of course that you maintain that consistency consistency because you know why your audience is coming to see you and you know what they want to see but within your style flavor whatever niche you can do all kinds of expansive things for me I've always been a figure artist and then about five years ago when I went back to graduate school or went back to school to graduate school I decided that I wanted to focus on the portraits so that's what I did I did figure of course too but I have focused heavily on portraiture and then when I get out I decided to do this whole series of portraits of women from around the world which of course hopefully you remember my bohemian goddess series but that was huge for me and that was a great learning experience i got a few more over here learning how to draw all these different faces and skin tones and everything it was wonderful and then i decided okay now i've done portraits for a while now i want to try going back to the figures that i love so much but i want to add something new and that's of course when i started doing these insane shadow shapes on everything these were very very challenging to do but they're a lot of fun you know it is not easy to get all those little details but it's okay you know the my first ones were a little bit rough and they're getting better and better and now of course I'm going on to the three-dimensional works too so it's great because within my own little style my own little favorite area of drawing figures, I've been able to branch out and do all these new things. And that's important for your artwork too, because your audience, of course, they want to see what you are good at and what they came there to begin with, but they want to see you grow. They want to see you get better. It's inspiring to watch people get better. Not to mention the fact that if you challenge yourself and you do things like Inktober or you follow other artists' challenges or, you know, the um, draw this in your style or whatever, you can do all kinds of things. That is going to help you garner a new audience when you can use new hashtags or get into new communities or new groups or just show new abilities. Like, it's going to be a refreshment for not only you and your artwork, but your audience and new audience members. You can't get any better than that. Uh, and here I am on beautiful Waimanalo Beach. It's kind of a chill day today, a little, little crashy in the wave area, so I got the beach very much to myself, which is nice. Um, but anyways, let us talk Number four, consistency. Now this is very important. I think a lot of young artists like don't really think about this as much um, because like sometimes it's hard just to be consistent in making artwork, you know, like we get distracted, we go out of town, things happen. Maybe if you're in school, you have tests, whatever. So what can happen is like you'll post a thing and then maybe you'll post your dog and then maybe you won't post anything for a week and then yada yada. And that's okay if you're just kind of like doing it for fun, but if you wanna do this as like a real, career option or part partial or career or whatever you need to be consistent because people need to be able to count on you your audience needs to be able to rely on you to be there and give them the art and the content that they want like and also the thing is 
is not only do they want to see it, they're curious, they want more and more, but they people don't buy art all the time. They buy art at certain special occasions. So you need to make sure that you're always fresh on their mind for when those occasions happen. Like gift giving, maybe their best friend or sister or something like that. A gift is coming up. Maybe they're moving, you know, like those things don't, the, those don't come up all the time, you know what I mean? But when they do, like if you haven't posted anything for a week or six weeks or something like that, then when they are signing their lease and excited to move into their new place, they're not gonna be thinking about you as the centerpiece over their mantle. They're gonna be thinking about whatever artists they just most recently saw and have been seeing like every day or every couple of days, you know what I mean? So for one, being consistent lets your audience know that like, yeah, you're there. And of course, what does that show? That leads to number two, that you are a professional. Being consistent is one of the easiest cheapest ways to be professional because people like can count on you if they're like okay oh Kaylee she does art because I know because she makes art because she's always posting art she always has art content she's always going to art shows and art galleries and she's doing blogs even while she's hiking about art like so it's like oh Kaylee Bird art that girl that makes art yeah okay she's an artist got it you know what I mean like it's that it's that repetitiveness that makes you at the top of people's minds and makes you look professional nobody who knows me doesn't know that I make art. You know what I'm saying? And that's important. And my entire online presence is all about art making and I'm always doing my best and putting my best foot forward. So that consistency is super key. People know they wanna be able to rely on you for what they've come to love, right? And number three is who knows what is going on with these algorithms, but they love consistency too. That is one thing that I can tell you that across the board, every single social media outlet likes is someone who is consistent. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it every day. It kind of varies on the platform and it varies with you. Like it's definitely better to have quality content over quantity for sure, for sure, for sure. Quality over quantity always, but just make sure that that quality is consistent. You know what I mean? And it comes out on a regular basis. Like I see very successful artists that might only post like two or three times a week on Instagram, but when they do, it's beautiful. And they know every couple of days, their followers know they can see something new. So whatever your rhythm is, you know, I'm a weekly poster on YouTube. Some people do every day or five days a week or whatever. So just find your rhythm, find your consistency. Your people will love it. They'll come to you when they're ready to buy because you'll be on the fresh of their mind and the social media, whatever, algorithms, mysterious whoever's will love you too. And you can't beat that. Yay, consistency, ow! Ready for number five, and that is say yes. Say yes to as many opportunities as you can in the beginning of your art career. Um, I mean, really throughout your career, you wanna say yes as much as you can, but especially at the beginning, you want to say yes because you really don't know what is going to get you connected with who or vice versa. Um, sometimes as a beginning artist, you're gonna be asked to do random things like paint a mural, which I've never really posited myself as a mural painter, but I've done one or two little things now, you know? Or like, um, you know, somebody might say, hey, we're taking volunteers for an art installation. Maybe you don't do major art installation work, but hey, you show up, you help out, and guess what? Maybe there's a gallery director there, and you know, you get to chatting with them, and now you've got this connect or whatever. Like, when I got hit to uh, do the, um, paint the mini surfboards when I first moved out to the island, I was like, I don't know anything about surf, surfing, really not much about surf culture. And I've just moved to Hawaii. I don't really know the landscape or whatever yet, but I said yes. And now here I am three years later and it's like a pretty, you know, pretty good steady stream of income for me and has been. So, um, of course with that, you don't want to be taken advantage of. Now you don't want to be doing a whole bunch of stuff for free for exposure, unless it actually is valid, good, legitimate exposure. Um, because like, honestly, even still now I do stuff for free or for exposure trade here and there. I'm very, very selective. I don't do it a lot, but every once in a while when it really is worth it, it can be great and it can help you meet so many new people. And I'm telling you, if there's one thing that artists need, it's connections because that is one major way that artists, um, continue on with their journeys is by the connections they meet and the people they like. So you want to say yes, make connections, do as much as you can 
Now here's the big thing that you can put your best effort into. The worst thing that you can do is, you know, spread yourself too thin again, but this time in person instead of online, commit to do a bunch of stuff and then wind up doing everything like, you know, half-assed, excuse me, but you know, I don't know what the other term is, but not putting your full effort into it because then you get a reputation of someone who doesn't put their full effort into things and that is really bad. So. Do everything with gumption, do as much as you can, try to get your name out there, be positive, be great to work with, say yes. Oh my gosh, look at this sunset going on right now. Thanks for being here, folks. Make sure you check the links down below for my blog post where I have all this great advice written out and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you come back and see me soon.